Well, hi, my name is Emily. Um, I am here to talk to you about uh, time allocation. Um, this is diving into the subject of microeconomics and uh, utility maximization and um, labor supply. So the first thing I wanted to talk to you about is um, what humans do with their time. Now, time is a resource. So we do three activities with our time. One is market work. The other is non-market work. And then there is leisure time. So non, uh, so market work is where you go to work, they pay you for your time, let's say salary, uh, hourly, whatever, income. And uh, I got a little guy here uh, that's a construction dude. He's got a saw and his wood. And then I've got a little hammer <laughs> to show market work. Then there is non-market work. Now, mar non-market work is anything that you do uh, work-related that... Um, is for your personal consumption. So let's say I'm cooking myself a meal. Well, this is work, but I'm using it. I'm, I'm doing work to um, gain for myself, for my personal consumption. So that would be considered non-market work. Also, studying. Studying would be um, considered non-market work because you would be studying for obtaining your degree, and that would be for your personal consumption. So, and then the last thing is leisure time. Now, leisure time is anything that is non-work. So I've got a little guy in a hammock here drinking a cold one and fanning himself, which looks like actually like something I'd want to be doing right now. Um, also, there is uh, TV, watching TV, things like that. So uh, leisure is interesting. That It is a normal good. So if you look at leisure, it's actually a good, considered a good. And um, so it follows the, along the lines of the law of diminishing marginal utility. And this means that the more leisure time that you have, the less uh, marginal utility that last hour of, or that last unit of leisure time is. So I wanted to talk to you guys about opportunity costs. Now that we've discussed what you do with your time, I wanted to talk to you about opportunity costs. Now opportunity cost is what a resource could earn in its best alternative use. So. Um, your time being the resource. So let's say um, you make really good money. Well, then the opportunity cost um, for um, leisure would be higher because you're making really good money, which brings me along the lines of the labor supply curve, which I want to talk to you about today. So we've discussed what we do with our time. Now let's discuss um, what money has to say about our time. So um, every day we are um, maximizing our utility, whether we actually know it or not. Um, we normally, um, on a routine day-to-day -day basis, um, will do as much of these three items so that they're all equal in marginal utility at the last, the last unit of time is equal, their marginal utility is equal to each other. So you're getting the most out of each one, basically. Um, so when looking at the labor supply, individually, we look at wages per hour. If you were off on summer break and you wanted to know whether or not you should get a job, well, you're debating it, so you're not really sure what you want to do. Um, you're gonna, we're going to look at just money. So other, all other things constant. It's a normal job. Everybody has the same kind of job. It's just all about money. So you're just you're you're determining whether or not you should substitute your leisure your leisure time and your non market work time with market work time. So at seven dollars an hour, it's not worth your time to go to work. So you would not. You would actually not substitute any of that work, any market work for uh, the other two activities that you're doing because you just get more out of the other two. Um, but then once you hit $8 an hour, well, then it's worth your time. But it's not worth all of your time. It's worth some of your time. Let's say 20 hours. So when I make $8 an hour over the summer, it would be worth 20 hours a week because that's how much I would be getting out of um, the last unit of um the last uh, unit of marginal utility would be equal to, 20 hours of it would be equal to uh, my non-market work and my leisure time. Uh, so this is called, basically, this is the more that you make, like let's say $9 or $10 or $11, the more that you make, the more time that you're willing to substitute market work for another um, 
instead of non-market work or leisure time. So I'm willing to work a little bit more because um, because of the substitution effect of wage increase. So I'm, I'm willing to substitute um, and, and work more instead of those because I'm gonna get more back. So but then once you hit $13 an hour, let's say, um, once you hit this, the higher your wage, the more your demand for goods. Well, leisure, is a normal good and so we demand this time so the higher income that we have the more the more we demand leisure so now you see, you'll see it's going backwards now now i don't want to give as much time because i'm making more money i can i want more leisure time i want more of that good and this is called the income effect of a wage increase anyway and this is all called the backwards bending uh labor spike curve curve because it goes forward and then backwards so anyway, I hope that you enjoyed my lesson today and that you learned something and uh, have a great day. Thanks.